All right, uh, welcome once again to the Youth Ministry course. Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, I'm doing a lot better this week. Thanks again for asking, guys. Good to see you all. Um, let's pray and we'll get started, shall we? Father, we submit this time uh, into your hands. Thank you for another beautiful day, new week. Thank you for your faithfulness that sustains us. Thank you for your mercy that upholds us, that guards us, that guides us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our constant strength. Uh, you are our constant in every situation, in every circumstance, you remain the same. Uh, you are our strong tower, a mighty fortress in whom we can rely on. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this, uh, for blessing us and filling us with your spirit of revelation and your spirit of wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. And okay. So uh, in the last class, we started off with uh, just understanding who the youth are, right? uh, what the world has to say about the youth, the society has to say about the youth, and who exactly are they? Is it just an age or is it the way they think? Uh, you know, is it the way they do things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's what we looked at in the last class, going into, uh, leading us into another question as to uh, why is youth ministry important in the church uh you know and the answer to that as we saw was it's always been important uh, for, you know for in, in in the history of israel in their culture as well uh so so sure youth ministry is a lot more fancy word to use uh but you they've always had youth ministry in the church children's ministry etc right it's important for us to uh, shape and mold them and instill the word of God into them and get them when they are young, right? Uh, and uh, so that's what we covered in the first chapter. And uh, today uh, we'll cover another simple um, chapter, um, youth ministry with a vision. So now we've established that, uh, you know, we kind of have an understanding of who the youth are, kind of, uh, you know, and what they do and how they do things. And we've also established that it is important for a church to have a youth ministry division, to reach out to the youth, uh, to connect with them, to bless them, to disciple them, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we've established um, those points. Uh, now, uh, what do we do? Right? How are we going to go about this? Um, and um, and so this chapter, basically, uh, most of it, most of this course material is uh, is uh, 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 out of the of uh, my experience personally as a youth pastor uh, at at APC. Okay, and so um, so youth ministry with a vision. Any ministry that uh, you know. Uh, has to have a vision you might know that if you've taken any leadership courses uh, or if you've heard of any leadership talks you would have heard that the importance of vision uh, as a leader etc etc right uh, vision is right up there and you know i'm sure you've heard this question many times being thrown at you saying what's the difference between a vision and a mission and a vision statement mission statement and all of that right i'm sure you've heard of all that and so um, I'm not going to go <laughs> in detail about that, but every ministry uh, in our context, uh, it's important to have a vision. Uh, first thing, uh, okay, so why would you say a vision is important? You, yeah, you guys talk to me. Why is a vision necessary for a ministry? Because ministry, no, it's God's work. No, why do we need to have a vision? <laughs> uh, uh, have you had it? people say that? We'll go with the flow. Okay, everybody can hear me, right? <laughs> Why would you say it is important uh, for you as a leader uh, to have a vision? for your ministry. Okay, thanks, Mangi. Uh, finally, a response. <laughs> it provides direction, okay? 
right? Yeah. Elisha says it will provide you with a sense of direction. Okay. What else? Anything else? Another synonym with the word direction, say, clarity, right? Uh, it is strategic, yeah. Strategic, clarity, okay. Where there is no vision, people perish according to the Bible. Okay, all right. If we guide your decision um, and prior, yeah, prioritize, yeah, priorities. It will guide. Okay, so uh, all right, keep it coming. I want you to think and and let me know. Uh, we are not a lot of people in this class, about twelve of us. So I think everybody can voice out your opinion, your thought. Makes us alert and consistent, okay? Yeah, helps with planning and goal setting, okay? Yeah. Asha, Kung, Prabhakar, okay? It provides motivation, inspiration, okay? I'm loving the answers, guys. Long term versus short term. Okay. Without vision, people can get lost in chaos. Everyone will have different opinions. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I hope you guys realize that each and every answer of yours is correct. And each and every answer of yours can be kind of dissected and dug deeper into understanding what that means is right uh, avni says vision sets our feet on the right path yeah okay thank you uh, right for example uh, when i what i meant when i said that okay each and every response of yours can be kind of you know uh, dug deeper to study further and whatnot is one response for example is say long term versus short term uh, now, that alone is a session in itself, understanding the difference between a long-term vision and a short-term vision and whatnot, right? And if I ask you uh, more questions about your response, saying, okay, for example, the first response was it provides direction. We can just dwell on that subject, on that topic, direction uh, itself for another session, isn't it? So why do we need direction? Why do we need vision? Why do we need clarity? So it guides us, et cetera, et cetera. And if you at least ask why, five times to the, your response it will kind of take you more deeper into understanding what vision is all about right um, and so um, just a quick definition everything that you've said is correct but then uh, you know the definition uh, the dictionary defines vision as a vivid and imaginative conception or anticipation imaginative conception or anticipation I prefer to define it as a goal that you have set out to accomplish. Um, I, I like those choice of words there uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, that is vivid to imaginative conception uh, or anticipation. Um, in other words, it simply means that a vision is free. <laughs> right? You can just, <laughs> that's basically what it is. Vision, vision is free. Uh, um, even past Ashish, when we were having a, a pastors meeting or staff meeting etc a leaders meeting he would uh, say you know to have vision for a ministry he says you know hey vision is free right you can imagine imagination is free <laughs> right uh, so there's no there are no boundaries um, for your for your ministry per se okay so the, it is a vivid uh, vision uh, is a vivid to imaginative conception or anticipation um, Right? It's a goal that you set out to accomplish. Right? It is a goal that is set out to accomplish. So you step into a ministry, uh, you're a leader, you, you've taken up the reins and whatnot. Um, and the question is, okay, what do I do now? Isn't it? Um, okay, so what's the next step? Uh, what's happening? What 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 am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? It's uh, it's it's the same thing with any uh, job that you might find, isn't it? You get hired to do something. Uh, uh, you know, 
let's say a sound engineer in a church and then your immediate question is going to be related to that field isn't it okay so now what do i going to do what am i going to do what's next what's next isn't it so the goal that you set out to accomplish it sets out as a, a vision okay um so lacking a goal or vision will also make it difficult uh, to measure accomplishments and that's another point to remember as to why vision is important is that if you do not have a vision it will make uh, it will be very difficult to measure your accomplishments um, because especially when you're set out to do accomplish some things how do you measure is it, okay I did this I did this um, and then when you look back five or six months down the line um, how do you quantify it or how do you say okay we did this let's move on let's now we into the step two phase two or whatever right um, so If you are doing things in ministry without a vision, um, it's like you are doing a lot of things, but uh, there's not. It's like you're running on a treadmill, right? You there's a lot of action that is happening, but you're in the same place. I hope you get what I'm saying, right? Uh, there's a lot. Of, you can keep doing a lot of things, uh, a lot of actions, activities, uh, but and still remain in the same place uh, because of the lack of vision, and you haven't set out clear goals to accomplish long term, short term, everything, direction, clarity, uh, which path to take, and whatnot. Okay, uh, like let's just go everywhere, try to do everything, uh, etc. Okay, uh, so. What, the reason I felt that the importance of this chapter was this is the first question I asked myself. Uh, okay, so um, I'm leading the youth ministry now. Okay, Roshan, so it's a big deal. There are at, at that point in time, I'm sure there still are about 150 odd young people at APC. Now, when you reduce people down to a number, it's, it doesn't really hit you. Like 150 lives uh, are a lot of lives, and to know, and when you know that you are responsible uh, and you are called to shepherd the, these many people, um, you know it starts. Uh, you suddenly have reality check. It's like, okay, wow, that's a that's a lot of people. <laughs> that's uh, you're going to be leading, and so it was very important for me. Uh, to ask me this question, okay, what is the purpose of the youth ministry? Now, it's not, I asked this question not because I knew the importance of vision or, or anything. It was because I was in a place of, I don't know what to do. Has anyone been there? <laughs> right? Uh, or is it just me? Like, I don't know what to do. Uh, what do I do? Like, uh, Okay, <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, thank you. I have one person in company. Okay. <laughs> right. So it was such a huge responsibility. Um, and, you know, I was like, okay, I found myself in the place. Okay, God, what do I do now? You know, uh, that was the challenge every year, year after year, month after month. Uh, and I get, I could just share stories after stories of my challenges. <laughs> but <laughs> let's move on. So, I asked this question to myself, okay, what is the purpose of the youth ministry at APC? Uh, and uh, and so God led me to this two uh, scriptures in the Bible um, in, that led me, this question led me into a time, a season of just seeking God, finding Him, uh, see what He has to say. Uh, because uh, what you have to know is that I have, I until the time I became a youth pastor, I have I had zero experience in youth ministry, zero experience uh, in youth ministry. Right? I have not led a bunch of young people, uh, what not. Um, in my head, I was past the age of the youth, and what. Uh, and I'm like, okay, you know, once you cross thirties, something physically happens and mentally happens to your body and your mind. Um, you don't want to do the. <laughs> All the hyper things that uh, you used to do, etc. You just want to sit at home and chill a little bit, and you know, 
you get what I'm saying. So I came into this youth ministry as a youth pastor with zero experience. I had no knowledge of how to lead, what to do and whatnot. So that led me into the season, the question of what do I do? I don't know what to do. Just seek him. And uh, God in his mercy, uh, you know, in, in his ways, uh, he took me to these two scriptures. Uh, one is found in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 40. We all know that. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 and 40, it says, uh, the great commandment, it's what it's called. It's highlighted in your Bibles. Uh, Jesus replied, I love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Okay, that's Matthew 22, 37 and 40, 37 to 40. And then the second scripture was the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. We all know this by heart, right? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, uh, what do you think my response was? Um, you know, the first time I read it, it's like I was not jumping out, leaping. It's like, oh, right, I have youth ministry figured out now. Let's go and rule the world. <laughs> if you're thinking that was my response, it clearly wasn't. I had to continue to meditate on those two scriptures and uh, just take it word by word word by word, meditate on it and study on it and just spend time praying on these scriptures, asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what are you trying to speak to me through these scriptures? What are you trying to say to me or teach me? Help me understand. Uh, right? I love this scripture in Psalm 119, verse 18. It says, open my eyes to the hidden and the wonderful things of your word. Um, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, open my eyes to the wonderful things of your word. Right, uh, and and it's one thing to, you know, while we are talking about vision, uh, how many of us know that there is a difference between vision and sight? Right um, now, with my eyesight, I could read the scriptures, but I needed the help of the Holy Spirit to, you know, have that vision behind these scriptures to have His insight, if I may say, right, um, into the scriptures. So as I studied and dwelt and meditated on these two scriptures, um, it started breaking things out. Um, and you, you, and you, and that led me to five of these uh, pillars, or whatever you want to call it, purposes. Maybe we we'll break it down. Okay, so. Uh, the greatest commandment, Matthew 22, 37, 40, it starts off by saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Now, it simply translates to worship. That's what it is. Right? Uh, when we learn about worship, is it's our complete affection, our devotion, our everything uh, is to Him. And so that's basically what is. And so love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is worship. And then it goes on to say, love the neighbor as yourself. And that can be translated into ministry. And what is ministry? The literal, uh, the Greek word, or uh, the Hebrew word for ministry simply uh, comes from the root word of cup bearer. Right? Uh, to serve, basically. That's what it is. To be a cup bearer. Right? And that's what ministry is, to love your neighbor as yourself, is to serve your neighbor in ministry. Right, That's what ministry is. And, and then going to the Great Commission, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. That can be translated as evangelism. And then baptizing them can be translated into fellowship. Baptizing them is what? Immersion, immersion right? bringing them in. Right? And then finally teaching them to obey can be translated uh, as discipleship. And so this five things was given, uh, it was, you know, it took away from these two scriptures. So now we are kind of getting somewhere from, from the place where I was saying, okay, I don't know what to do, Lord, to God giving me these two scriptures, meditating on them, and then to dissecting them and breaking them down and taking away these 
five words uh, from those two scriptures, like love the Lord your God with all your heart. Okay, you have worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship. Uh, and so, now this was the like the foundation of where I could begin something to build on. Right now most of you said direction or clarity or guidance right and so this was what uh was for me the beginning of me you know going in a path where god is leading me with you know with, with one step at a time and and no it this wasn't enough right um after i got this five points here worship ministry evangelism fellowship and discipleship so Okay, now I know what God is what God is trying to teach me, where He's taking me, uh, and you know what He'd like to see accomplished in the youth ministry. Uh, and now I had to, you know, slowly break it down a little bit more further. Okay, uh, just to understand uh, and for, under, for us to understand this as well. Uh, by the way, guys, are you all with me? Is everybody okay? Seems like I'm just talking. <laughs> Any thoughts so far? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Cool. Thank you. Right. So, uh, I mean, we've learned quite a bit about worship. Uh, we learned about praise and worship in our first semester, uh, first year, and then worship ministry in the last semester. And uh, and so, just a different, these are just a few pointers of, of everything what worship can be. I didn't want to, obviously, you know, we can put in an entire textbook into that section, right? Uh, and so, I, but just a few pointers for me to understand what it is, and I'll and I'll tell you why all of this is important, and to just put it in, uh, and we talk about the, our audience in just a bit. So worship, you can say quite a lot of uh, things about worship. It's about celebrating God's presence, honoring Him with our lifestyle. Worship is also praying, hearing the word, reading the word, giving, baptizing, meditating, communion, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and all of that can be worship, right? Singing and singing songs and making music and whatnot. The list can actually go on and on. Um, so all of that can come into worship, and then we look at ministry and you start breaking it down. Um, you know, meeting needs with love. Uh, that's what ministry is: is love your neighbor. Uh, isn't it? It's you know, it simply means to serve. Um, I I love this scripture. I'm not sure. Well, some of someone can maybe help me. I think it's found in Hebrews chapter six verse ten. Uh, Hebrews chapter six verse ten. Uh, it says that uh, by serving one another, we express our love to God. Let me just check if that is right. Sorry. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, yeah, so let me just read it for us. Hebrews 6, verse 10. It says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Uh, it's a wonderful scripture, isn't it? Um, another translation version says, uses the word serve instead of help. And so in many ways, it's, you know, it's, as the scripture says, we, as we serve one another, we are saying, God, I love you. Right? And that's what, uh, again, ministry is all about, meeting needs with love. And John chapter 13 is the, is the greatest example of all of that where jesus says i did not come to be served but to serve and then he goes on to wash the feet of his disciples in that chapter right so ministry uh worship uh worship ministry uh god has blessed every believer with special gifts to be used for ministry uh students youth shouldn't have to wait until they are adults to minister uh, a healthy youth ministry will constantly encourage the youth to discover their gifts and put them in practice through ministry and mission opportunities. When the purpose of ministry is applied, you will graduate the youth student ministers rather than 
program attendees. Um, student ministers won't graduate from their faith when they graduate from the youth ministry. So now we understand now that we've understood what ministry is all about, it's important for us to you know begin to teach our young people. And as a youth leader, as a pastor, as a leader, it's important to start recognizing the gifts of every individual and where they are, and then encourage them to serve minister as well. Okay, um, that's worship. At ministry and then the third point was evangelism um, evangelism uh, is it's that's how we grow right bringing people in sp by spreading the good the good news of Jesus Christ so sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with those who don't yet have a personal relationship with him that's basically what this evangelism is isn't it uh, this is probably the most weakly expressed purpose uh, because why it is difficult to fulfill on a program level like okay you have two programs in one year let's say or during good friday or easter say okay we're going to have an outreach thing and that's where we use you give the gospel message or whatnot and you call it an uh, evangelism outreach uh, program uh you know you have hundreds or two hundreds or thousands maybe even come in and participate it and again it becomes a little hard to gauge you can do it I'm not saying you can't, but then it is difficult to fulfill on a program level and it's very threatening on a personal level. Why do I say that? Uh, young people are, are, you know, and not just young people, any individual will be scared given the political climate of, uh, of our country is to go walk up to a person and say, I would like to talk to you about Jesus and whatnot. It's quite threatening. It could be very alarming for an individual to do that. So it's challenging. Nevertheless, it has to be part of our ministry, right? Um, and and so again, it it's important for the adult leadership to model the purpose of evangelism. Comes flows from the top. Uh, how well is the adult leadership uh, modeling this? And so when this purpose is evident in a youth ministry, growth will happen, not because of an evangelistic program, but because of evangelistic students or young people, so to speak. Okay. Um, so that's evangelism and fellowship. God did not intend for Christians to live in isolation, you know that, but in fellowship with the other believers and to be identified as the body of Christ. A true fellowship happens when people are known, cared for, held accountable, and encouraged in their spiritual journey. Having said all that, fellowship is usually the strongest purpose. Often, fellowship is so strong that Christian students lose sight of evangelism and focus only on other believers and become dangerously apathetic from, from the lost. Um, so, uh, you guys see, you know, in all of these five points, uh, if there is no balance, it's very easy for us to tilt on one thing, right? It all depends on the culture that the leader is setting. Uh, if the leader is only going for fellowship, you know, there has to be fellowship, 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 community, 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 and, you know, it was just one thing. Uh, the, the only thing that's driving that ministry will be fellowship, and everything else will be forgotten. That, say, for discipleship will be forgotten. Evangelism will be uh, forgotten. There's no outreach that's happening. It's just coming together, coming together, and whatnot, right? Fellowship is important. How we balance that out with everything else is what's also more important. Which leads us to the next part. The last point is discipleship. Um, what is discipleship? Again, we can talk about this quite a bit, but simply the building up or strengthening of believers in their quest to be like Christ. Right? Uh, to be like Christ. Uh, I'll, I'll just mention, uh, I'm not sure if I share this with you. Um, if you've heard of this person, uh, Ray Vanderlaan, uh, or if you haven't, uh, I would encourage you to, uh, you know, just listen to some of his teaching. He is, he is uh, wonderful in the way he teaches uh, the culture of ancient Israel, people, and the way he teaches discipleship. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 he's really good in that. And so, in and he talks a lot about how the, imp the importance of discipleship was and how it was born from this place called Galilee, right? And um, and I just want to highlight 
point from what I've learned from him is he said, it's always like, you know, we, we, we learned in the previous chapter that young Jewish kids as young as three year old are sent to synagogues to learn and study the word of God. That was their school. That was their kindergarten. That was their LKG, UKG and whatnot. Right. Um, and, uh, and so by the time that they are nine or 10, they would have the whole Old Testament by heart. Uh, and so, you know, it was big on discipleship. And after they kind of graduate from that thing, they have two options. One, to if they can afford, they can go and study under a rabbi, continue studying under the rabbi, or they have another option of pursuing their family uh, business. Uh, you know, so going into fishing or carpentry or whatever. And uh, and if the student was good enough, if when a student goes and asks a rabbi, can I be your disciple? And the, it's the rabbi who gets to decide saying, OK, you've done well in these things. You can follow me. Uh, and the, the, one of the most beautiful things about Jesus as a rabbi is that he went and asked, follow me. Um, right. And so uh yeah <laughs> that's just a side note basically um and this is a saying in the jewish culture about being a disciple is uh in the it's quite a beautiful saying the dust of the the dust of the rabbi uh it, it simply means to say that you are walking so close with the rabbi that the dust that comes off his sandals are on you and so in, in metaphorically saying that, OK, you are walking so close with him that you know you begin to look just like him eventually. And that is the end goal of a disciple, is that you begin, you end up looking uh, like your, your rabbi, your teacher. And so hence, discipleship is extremely important for us to disciple our young people and to shape them and to mold them in the quest, in their walk, to uh, look like Christ, to be like Christ. Right? Um, it can be most unrewarding uh, since spiritual maturity is difficult to measure. Uh, discipleship flourishes under spiritual leaders who consistently plant seeds and water students' faith. Um, so again, I'm sharing all of this. Is I? It's not like I got the two scriptures that God gave me and everything was said. And so as, we, as I meditated, he taught me to break it down. And then he gives me these five different parts. And then again, it doesn't end there. We need to just go a little bit more deeper, say, okay, what is worship? What is, why, why are these important? Why should these uh, five things be uh, in the youth ministry, present in the youth ministry? Uh, again, now, guys, and as a side note, I want to be very clear that this is my journey of getting the vision and the purpose for the youth ministry at APC. I'm not saying that this is how you should function. And if you end up leading a youth ministry, I'm not saying, OK, you should use these things, five things. OK, please understand that this is my journey into just understanding, getting into this zone of vision and purpose and whatnot. OK, so um, so got the two verses, got these five uh, points of worship uh, to discipleship and whatnot. Um, now, I have. There were two audiences for me in ministry. There are always two audiences. One is the youth. OK, uh, you have, uh, like I said, we had about 150 young people. But and I'm one person. I'm not only present. Uh, APC has five different locations, right? Uh, central, north, south, east, west. Um, so it is impossible for me um, to do or to see anything accomplished all by myself, for which I needed a team. Uh, we, we call this the core team, the leadership team, the youth leadership team, or the core team, whatever. Right? At uh, that time, the team was consisted of a fifteen to eighteen people, uh, and so, and I had to communicate all of these things to my team as well. So now. Once they understand, OK, this is where the youth ministry is. This is what we want to do. We spoke about these five points. And it was, and then we did one exercise. We, we had to do an exercise. Uh, we had to come up with a, a vision statement or a purpose statement. So uh, the challenge for us was um, 
So to use all these five words that we have, that we got, which is worship, fellowship, evangelism, discipleship, and ministry, uh, it want, we wanted us to come up with a vision statement, uh, simply because just to drive it in more clear, you know, just to get them involved, make them feel that they are also part of this journey. Um, when I say them, is the core team. So I'm. It's not. I'm the only one saying, okay, this, 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 so and so, so and so. No, I had to remember that they are my team and uh, had to make them feel like they are also responsible uh, and part of this journey. And so once I communicated about these five different parts, these points, uh, pillars, so to speak, the importance of it, uh, we need to come up with a, uh, a vision and, or a purpose statement. Uh, the only thing I told them was one, okay guys, this vision statement has to be simple, it has to be meaningful. Uh, it has to be action oriented. That means it is something that uh, pushes us to do something. It should be compelling. Okay. Uh, by the way, all these points are in your notes if you're looking at your PDF. Um, so, and that, and that was the exercise. And again, we sat down, and uh, we started looking for synonym words. For all these five different words, okay. So, what what are some of the synonym words for worship? Okay, you can use exalt or passion or offer. Uh, I've just mentioned a few in the notes, guys. Okay, uh, fellowship can be say okay, enjoy, encourage, care. Evangelism is expose, spread, reach. Discipleship can be equip, share, develop. You know, ministries, experience, service, serving. These are all synonym words. Are you guys with me, right? Everybody. I hope you are hanging in there okay <laughs> all right cool so um we had to use some of these words and put it together in a sentence that is simple that is meaningful yet action oriented and compelling so uh, for example uh you know it can look like this this is an example right uh the goal of our Okay, I, I know it's in the notes. I'm, I'm just going to paste it here for us uh, in the chat section. So, the goal of our student ministry, okay, see the vision is translated as goal. The goal of our student ministry is to expose teenagers uh, to God's love, to equip. That is discipleship there. Uh, equip them to exalt God. Exalt God is worship. Uh, enjoy other believers. That is uh, fellowship. Enjoy is fellowship, you know. Uh, and experience the work of the ministry. Experience uh, is again ministry, right? So, uh, I mean, okay, this is not a great vision statement or something, okay? This is just an exercise. Um, okay, so uh, why don't I, why don't y'all try out? Try this out, okay? I'm, I, let me give you all, like, say, three minutes <laughs> or so, three or four minutes. Uh, why don't you do this exercise and uh, use some of these words that's there and come up with a vision statement? <laughs> I know I'm being very mean by giving you all just, say, three, four minutes to come up with a vision statement. Do you all want to give it a try? Yes, Avni. No, um, I will take some time for pastor and then oh. I'll try to write. That's what I'm saying. We are in. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you can do that as well. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe in the next class, you can, uh, uh, you know, share that if you want to, uh, you know, which is fine. But, uh, yeah, I hope you understand, right? What we what we are doing here is, you know, it's important to put it into words that what you've understood, saying, okay, so now it's very clear. Um, and so, okay, just to send this home, uh, finally, we came up with this purpose statement. Uh, if you look in the notes, uh, after like an hour or so, we decided on this. It says, APC Youth Ministry exists to equip and empower that's, you know, we've hidden discipleship and thing there. Young people to become true worshippers of Jesus, 
love people, that's ministry there, and spread his love, that's evangelism in the city of Bangalore and the nation of India. Now, another guideline, what I told them and not uh, is, our ministry, our vision statement, our youth ministry vision statement, our purpose statement, uh, has to be in line with the church's statement, with you know the church uh, vision of all people's church to be the salt and light in the city of Bangalore and the nation of uh, India and the nations, right? Um, it, because it's very easy, like in many churches, it's like okay, church has its own one. Um, thing and the youth ministry is doing its own thing and the church believes in one thing the youth ministry doesn't believe in that they do their own thing and whatnot but it was very important for us to remind us that it, the youth ministry is just another branch of this church that we call APC and it has to be in line to the vision statement of the church right and so uh, and that's why you know, we used all those words and then we ended with saying in the city of Bangalore and the nation of India. And that's how our uh, uh, vision statement ends. Okay, so you kind of get it, right? Okay. And so uh, once after explaining all of this thing, the importance of vision and what we're going to do once we had this purpose statement, uh, now we have this clarity. We exist to equip and empower. Our young people to become true worshippers of Jesus, who love people, spread his love in the city of Bangalore and the nation of India. And the next question was, okay, uh, let's look at what's happening at the moment. What are the different platforms that is available that will equip our young people in these three, three in these five different pillars, right? So we look, as you, when you look at worship, uh, you know, we have worship nights. You encourage the young people to come and be part of the worship nights. Uh, we used to have secret place that, you know, all night prayers and whatnot. Maybe we can have a weekend school of uh, on praise and worship uh, where they can come and again be equipped and empowered and learn, be lear and learn about worship. Um, the platform for ministry, say volunteering teams, it's about serving, isn't it? Uh, I've mentioned this so many times, at least at APC, we have 19 different teams working together to make one service happen, 19 different teams. And so there's definitely place where they can serve, be part of the setup team, the parking team, the ushering team, et cetera, et cetera. The list can go on. So you encourage the young people to come and be part of this ministry teams and go on missions. That's another platform where they can learn to serve one another. Evangelism, uh, the platforms we had was Campus Elevates, where we go into different colleges and schools uh, and you know have, uh, have a session for an hour for the students there. Uh, for fellowship, the platforms that we have was life groups, monthly youth meetings, uh, combined youth meetings, which we call as pit stop, uh, youth camps, youth retreats, uh, these are all the different platforms that the young people can be part of uh, and, you know, ha have fellowship. And uh, discipleship, again, uh, you have life groups, uh, the APC app, uh, where you get a lot of resources to equip themselves as well, and APC publications, etc. So these are all the platforms we let our young people know is available for them to, you know, be involved as well, right? So. Uh, you need two hands to clap, right? If if we as a leadership are trying to do everything for them, uh, it, the, you're not going to see much result. You kind of have to get them into partnering with you to see this vision accomplish, right? Um, and so uh, that is chapter two, uh, you know, in a nutshell, if I have to say. Uh, and I hope that it's kind of instilled the importance of vision in each and every one of us as a ministry leader uh, and whatnot. Uh, any thoughts, guys? Any questions as we close? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Uh, in that case, uh, thank you for joining in for today's class. I'll see you all again on Wednesday. Right, okay. And, uh,
yeah, feel free to share your the vision statement that you work on on the stream section. Uh, you know, let's, let's see. I'd probably post a question and then you can respond in comments with your vision statement using the words uh, from the notes. Okay. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for joining. You guys take care. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you, Pastor.